So number one, we want to solve for x and y. Notice that there are two triangles here. There's our little triangle and then a bigger triangle around it. We know that these triangles are similar because the lines are parallel. So corresponding angles are congruent and the shared angle is congruent. So now we want to set up her portions. And if it's hard to see how the two triangles relate, remember that you can draw them apart. So in the yellow triangle, we have 4, 8, and x minus 3. And then in the larger triangle, we have to add the 10 and the 4 to get 14 for the one side. 8 and x plus 3 add together gets us x plus 11 and the bottom side is 2y plus 1. So when we are trying to solve here, we notice that there are two x's. And if you look at the x minus 3 and the 2x minus 1, those are corresponding sides. So we're going to leave those alone for now because they've got two variables. So we notice that 4 and 14 are numbers on corresponding sides. So we can use 4 over 14 equals then we see the side with the 8 and the x are corresponding sides. So we have 8 over x plus 11. When we cross multiply here, we get 4 times x plus 11 equals 8 times 14. So we can distribute and we get 4x plus 44 equals 112. We can subtract 44 from both sides, so we get 4x equals 68. So when we divide by 4, we get x is 17. So now we can use that 17 into the x side to get that 17 minus 3 is 14. So 14 and the 2y plus 1s are corresponding. So when we cross multiply, 4 times 2y plus 1 equals 14 times 14. So we get 8y plus 4 is equal to 196. We can subtract 4 from both sides. And we get 192. So 8y equals 192. And we divide by 8. y is 24. In number 2, we want to find arithmetic and geometric mean. So arithmetic is just finding the average. We just add the two numbers together and divide by 2. So 16 plus 28 is 44. Divide by 2 gets us 22. For geometric mean, we are going to put 16 and 28 on diagonals from each other in the proportion. We are going to put x's in the missing part of our mean. So when we cross multiply, we get x squared equals. 448. We take the square root. Remember, we need a plus or minus sign. 448 is not a perfect square, but we can break down our square root to get a square root of 8 root 7. In number 3, find the ratio of x to y given that wx plus zy equals ay minus EX. So we want to get the X's on one side and the Y's on the other. So I'm going to subtract ZY from both sides and I'm going to add EX to both sides. So when we rewrite this, we get WX plus EX equals AY minus ZY. So we can get X out front by taking a GCF, which leaves us with W plus E. And we take a GCF of Y to leave us with a minus z. If we want the ratio of x to y, remember we're thinking backwards. What would cross multiply to get us to that factored step? So diagonal from the x, we would have w plus e, and diagonal from the y, we would have a minus z. In number four, we want to solve for x. So this is a proportion. We would cross multiply. So we get x plus x plus 8 equals 6 times 8. x squared plus 8x equals 48. So we're going to factor. We need the, tr the equation to equal 0. So x squared plus 8x minus 48 
is equal to 0. Two numbers that multiply to negative 48 and add to 8, we get x plus 12 and x minus 4 equals 0. We switch our sign, so x is negative 12 and x is 4. In number 5, what is the fourth proportional of 3, 9, 5, and 5? So remember that this is our first, second, and third proportional. Our fourth is x. So we have 3 over 9 equals 5 over x. We cross multiply. 3x equals 45. Divide. So x is 15. In number 6, the ratio of the complement of an angle to the supplement of an angle is 31 to or is 13 to 31. Find the measure of the supplement. So remember that we represent complement by 90 minus x and supplement by 180 minus x. So we're going to set that equal to 13 over 31, and we can cross multiply. So 31 times 90 minus x is equal to 13 times 180 minus x. We can distribute 2,790 minus 31x is equal to 2,340 minus 13x. So we're going to get the x's to one side and the number to the other. So we get that 15 18x is equal to 450. When we divide, we get that x is 25. Now, 25, remember, represents the angle, but we want the supplement, so we need to subtract that from 180. And we get 155 degrees. Number seven, are these triangles similar? Explain. So in A, we have parallel lines, so we can use our alternate interior angles. We also have vertical angles that are congruent. So these triangles would be congruent by angle-angle similarity. In B, notice that we have a right angle and we are given two other angles. Well, if we know two angles in the triangle, we can subtract. And in the first triangle, that missing angle is 40 and it's 50 in the second. So these triangles have at least two angles that are the same, so they are congruent by angle-angle similarity. In C, we need to see if these triangles are similar by having the same ratio, so we're going to pair up the shortest side with the shortest side first. So we have 18 over 12, that reduces to 3 over 2. Then we have 24 over 16 reduces to 3 over 2. And 32 over 24 equals 3 over 2. So they all reduce to the same ratio, which means that they are similar by side, side, side similarity. In number 8, the ratio of AB to BC is 5 to 3, and AC is 40. So AB is going to be 5x, and BC is going to be 3x. We have to figure out how much shorter is the shorter piece compared to the longer piece. So first we're going to find x by adding the two pieces equal to the whole. 8x equals 40, so x is 5, which means the longer piece is 25, the shorter piece is 15. So bc is shorter by 10 units. In number 9, given that parallelogram GRNE is similar to parallelogram PACK, find each of the variables and the scale factor and the ratio of sides. So, remember in similar figures that the angles are going to be congruent. And because it's a parallelogram, our opposite angles are congruent. So, we know in if P is 111 degrees, so is angle C, which makes angle G and angle N 111 degrees. So we know that v C has a value of 111 degrees. 
Then to find the missing angles, we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. So when we subtract 180 minus 111, we get 69 degrees for the other four angles. Which means that D has a value of 69 degrees and E has a value of 69 degrees. Also in a parallelogram, our opposite sides are congruent. So if we know that GE is 28, we know that RN is also 28. So B has a value of 28. Then to get A, 21 and A are corresponding sides. So 21 over A equals 28 over 32, the other corresponding sides. So when we cross multiply here, we get 28A is equal to 672. When we divide by 28, A has a length of 24. To find the ratio of sides, we would do side from the first figure over a side from the second figure. So we get 28 over 32. And that reduces to 7 over 8.